something a little different maybe um, about using this tool LMOD that we use at the cluster, um, which is really useful for sharing like software installations among many people who are trying to use the same versions of things. Um, so um, basically the overall idea is that you can install whatever software um, you want to wherever you want, just normally. Um, but then you have this Lua configuration file um, with a specific software name and then the version number, and it just specifies how you learn, lo load that software. Um, so in the simple case of like a pre-compiled binary, you might um, just set your path variable so that you have access to the software. That, that's what the you know equivalent of load would be in that case. Um, for maybe Python-based software, you might have a con environment or something that you load. Um, but so that's all specified in the Lua file. And then you would, the user who's trying to use the software just uses this module load command. So module load the software name and then slash the version. Um, and then if you want to, basically the Lua files all have to go under this directory structure that ends with like the software name and then the version dot Lua. And um, in order to use Lua files at the path, you have to specify this module use command. So just the, the parent directory to the software and the versions. Um, and in practice, a lot of us like have a module use command in our bash RC so that like whenever we load get onto the, the cluster, um, we automatically have access to certain modules. Um, so it's rather than you know running the module use command every time you log in, it's you can be useful to put that in your bash RC. Um, but in terms of like, I'll just go over sort of the theory of things and then we'll actually dive into a real example. Um, but yeah, as I mentioned, like honestly, a lot of the common cases when you're installing software are just like maybe you have um, a binary, whether you have to, you can just, whether it's pre-compiled and you just download it or it's something that you um, compile from the source code. Um, so installing that, of course, you just like download and um, uncompress it, maybe build it or run make or whatever to compile it. Um, and the Lua file, the only thing it has to do is you just it has some Lua code to append the, the parent directory to the binary um, to your path, which is just like, um, so that you can just run the command without having to specify the absolute path to the, the software. Um, and yeah, I also mentioned like a common case for us, at least at the cluster, um, is you might have like a major Python tool with a lot of dependencies and you want like often, if you're just doing it for yourself, you might just create a conda environment or a Python virtual environment and put, like install your dependencies there, have it isolated. Um, so in practice on the cluster, usually I would do something like um, basically have a conda environment um, with a specific directory path and then you, the Lua file would just specify to activate the, the environment at that path. Um, but yeah, we'll get into specifics. That's just like a quick view. Um, so in terms of like what a binary executable example would look like is like, if we have this tool, the software like Magma, um, um, in the simplest case, you just have something that you're downloading, you might unzip it and then that's, you already have the pre-compiled binary in some directory. And then the actual Lua config file would have, to make it more concrete, the command is like perpend path. So we're just adding this, the parent directory to the path. And then that's what loading with the software means in this context. Um, so that's a pretty simple example. Um, Python examples can get more um, involved. So you might, sometimes you, when you're, so this is basically the, this uh, code here is just like the installation portion of things. So you might load other modules. Um, in this case, this is a Python tool that happens to use like the version of Conda R here actually provides a version of Python. Um, but the overall idea here is that like we're creating a Python virtual environment. We're activating it. Within that, we're installing whatever Python dependencies we need. Um, and um, then sometimes you might need to install like a 
it might be part of a Git repo that has its own um, like recommended requirements. But uh, this is the installation piece of things. And again, we'll get into actually doing this um, interactively in a second. Uh, uh, yeah, and then the course line of configura Lua configuration file. Um, basically, often I will just do this type of setup where the Lua file just literally activates the Conda environment, or actually, sorry, Python, Python virtual environment upon loading the module. Um, so yeah, the module load command literally just runs like source activate. Um, and then when you're unloading the module, it's just the deactivate command. So it's like a pretty, um, it's almost like a wrapper around that. Um, actually this piece, I think, oh, we can just jump to the example because it will make more sense if we uh, to actually show you what I'm talking about. So um, we'll start by using LMOD to like locally um, basically install a pre-compiled binary software. Um, so in this case, uh, some people are using the Space Ranger software a lot. Um, so I'm going to install the most recent version and show how to use LMOD to um, load it. So um, in this case, um, this part is uh, Maybe the boring part, but um, basically just we'll, we'll install this. So let me um, go over to the cluster where I'm working. Um, usually, I find it helpful to have like a uh, shell script that sort of um, uh, documents exactly what you did to install the software. Which is helpful for if people want to, other people want to maintain the software. Um, so. Um, so in here, we already have like the command to um, download it. So actually, let me we'll make a little like source directory for where we're going to put this. So actually, this might be too small for the uh, um, Okay, so we're just going to we have this for all commands that we're going to run to pull the software. So yeah, just installing things normally for now, no LMOD involved yet. Um, so we're going to, so it's a tar gzip file, so we're going to, um, I always forget the, uh, um, the arguments for this, but um, just copy this here. So just uncompressing it um, and extracting that uh, binary file. So hopefully it should be quick. So while this is loading, mm -hmm. how, how do you um, how do you go about making sure that like other people also have like other users also have uh, access to it as well? Um, so it'd be two things. So one, you just are, should be careful about the permissions. So normally we'll do like a chmod command to uh, make it more accessible for um, anyone, and then um, also, we can just like basically tell people to have this module use command in their bash RC so that they like um, the module load command knows where to find the Lua files. It's like those two pieces, I guess. Um, um, so, in this case, we have a folder. This is actually not the binary itself, but I think it should be okay. They provide it in. I think this. So this L mode is to create like when you call it like multi load, it will load like for example space ranger in this case. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, which would be different. So it's either like putting on to the path or loading the environment, or it can be a different things, but you always use the module load command. Yeah. Um, so that's like the convenience of it. Okay, so I did find that this was the binary, it's in here. Um, so this is actually all we need to do to install things. Um, okay, so now that's, like I said, we just install things as normal, but then, um, We'll have a, I guess, a Lua folder where, and under this, we'll do. Actually, okay. I already made the Lua folder, but um, so we'll specify the name of the software, um, and then we will make a. Uh, yeah, the Lua file with the version number as a name, and that will be important later. Um, so let's just uh, um, okay. So we'll do. You can, there's a lot you can do with Elmod, but we'll do the very simplest version, which is just um, we'll have a single line uh, and prepends to the path, um, and we'll get the parent directory to. Uh, uh, all right, let me see. So we'll do the full path in this case. So we have, um, I'll assume that it keeps getting my way. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, um, let me remind myself where I put it. Okay, so source, space ranger, whoops. Two point point one. I think that's so that's the directory containing the the binary. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, all right. Let's verify this works. Um, so I can just just to demonstrate that you can do this from anywhere. Um, once you have your module use command, which again normally we won't have to type this out if we just put in our backward C or something, but um, for the sake of what we're doing right now, we just created this. So um, we'll do the full path to the, the um, folder containing the Lua. Um, so Lua, and I think that should be it. And then module load space um, 2.0 point. Um, Let's see what I did here. Um, one or more arguments are not strings. Okay, let me you know. Let me check what I uh, normally I will honestly. I have a lot of modules, so I'll just copy and paste something from before. So, oh, you know what? I think Lua might not accept single quotes as strings. I mean, I mean, I get so used to like Python. Um, so let me. See if that's what it is. Uh, okay, let's try this again. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, oh, yeah, you have the path. Oh, right? yeah. Okay, sorry. It's expecting two things and you're only giving it one. Yeah, I just, because there's multiple different types of path variables, I just got. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, Okay, so now we run this command. It doesn't say anything because we, you can, you know, you can provide messages in this Lua file, or you can do with a lot of things. But all we did was, you know, act, um, load the file. So now this space ranger binary is on the path because this is what we did with the Lua file. Um, so we can just run the space ranger command and it just works. So yeah, so that's like a simple example of a binary. Um, so yeah, we can start with that and then uh, we'll get into a more involved example, I think with like a Python um, tool. So let's go back to uh, where we just were. Uh, so the only difference if you had to, if it's not already compiled is you just have to, just to make. Yeah, you make. 
um, to uh, yeah, make install or whatever commands they recommend. Uh, yeah. So just follow the software. Yeah, and generally the, just, the guidelines are usually good. Um, sometimes they're not. Uh, actually, I think the case that I'm about to jump into, some of the guidelines are not quite right. Um, okay, so we'll do a second example. Let's say we have amazing. Um, there's this tool that people have been talking about for like stitching Visium images um, called Pace that I not yet installed. So I think this would be a good example. Um, if we get to the repo, we see um, ultimately it's once they describe it, um, uh, we see this pip command. So, okay, it's a Python based tool. Um, they either recommend installing it with pip or um, as part of a as part of Conda. Um, if we also look, they don't, okay. So I guess I looked at this repo before here and I saw that they didn't really recommend how to, what dependencies are needed and stuff. But I do see that they have a requirements.txt file, which I know PIP uses, um, which specifies the type Python packages that um, basically they recommend to have as uh, dependencies. So often when I see something like that, um, I will, use a Python virtual environment. And then from within that, we have pip install based on this requirements.txt file. So, okay, I described it in words, but let's actually do this. Um, so, okay, let's make a new file to describe. Um, so, am I in the right? Um, wait, one second. Um, I probably should have named this better because it's just not. Uh... Oh, well, okay. Let's just do it. Install, paste, um, shell script to document what we did. Um, and um, actually, I should probably do this on, let's do this on the cluster because that's to show how to actually build modules that on JHPCE would probably be useful. So let's do that. Um, so in practice out in the cluster, there's two directories. There's a Git repository associated with the source files, such so as where you install things. And then there's one with the Lua configuration files. So um, um, let's go to, actually, you know, I have that here, don't I? Uh, let's open up the, I was forget which one is which, but this one is the Lua one and this one is, um, uh, um, so basically, let me go to the browser so I can show what's going on. But yeah, so we have this um, mod source repo, which is where for when you're making modules in the LIBD modules in the cluster, um, we basically like commit like, so let's say, let's just open up one of these software tools. So we have multiple versions of FastQC. And we have normally make a readme describing. So basically what I did, I, I showed what commands you used to install the software, but we have also have additional things like the version control commands you run, um, reproducibility information, like you know what compute node were you on? Who are you? What modules do you have loaded? When did you do it? Stuff like that. So that like, it's very clear if people have two different like encounter issues, they like, there's a lot of information to work with. Um, so yeah, at the bottom of this readme, it shows like the locations on the cluster, which is what I, I just navigated to in, um, in my text editor. Um, so yeah, we don't have paste directory, so we'll start by making that, um, so paste and then, um, we will, let's go to the, um, let's see, make a uh, readme and um, actually normally we would copy um, me, uh, I forget the, the shortcut for this, but I want a, um, I want the terminal. Uh, 
Um, uh, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I like just turned to use VS code. Um, not the uh, okay, so we'll cure our sage so we get a compute node. Um, um Um, okay, so we made this paste directory. Um, actually, I'm gonna we just made an empty file. What I'm what I normally do in practice is like, um, actually, we might have to write the version number, so <laughs> like forgetting details. Um, so let me check what versions will be downloading. Um, okay, so yeah, with Git repos, by the way, I, it's for reproducible ability purposes, it's usually good to go into the releases tab instead of using the latest like Git clone or whatever. Um, so they do provide like a GZIP uh, tarball for this. So I'm going to copy the link to that. Um, and um, so I already for. <laughs> 1.3.0. Um, and then I'm going to uh, copy the readme from another directory since I'm lazy, basically. Um, so I know um, start with this one just because it's, it's something to start with. Uh, let's open this up and reload. Um, okay, so sometimes with Python software, I've noticed that like it tries to use your, um, like use your specific paths. So I got a little bit paranoid here and sometimes I run this command. Um, but okay, let's delete most of this. Um, okay, so to actually install the software, uh, first of all, we'll notice that I don't they don't seem to be very specific about what Python version. I don't think they recommend a particular Python version here. Um, so I'm just going to use like a, more, a recent, I'm going to base this off of one that's already available at, on the cluster. So I'm going to use, I'm going to check with this module avail commands, which Python versions we have modules for on the cluster. Um, I remember experimenting with this one and it's like, um, it was like broken when I tried it. So I'm going to use this uh, 3.8.3. So we'll start by um, loading this module to load. Um, okay, and then we'll create a Python virtual environment. So Python, actually, let me just make sure. Um, so we are using the modules Python. Um, so to create a virtual environment, we'll use this bem command, um, and we'll just put this where we are and just call it like a uh, paste bem, just that'll create a directory called that. Um, so this is just a basic Python virtual environment with this Python 3.8.3. Um, uh, Um, okay, so we'll now jump inside of this environment. So, um, I think it's, uh, I think this is an activate. Let me make sure this is right. Um, I forget where it is. Yeah, it's in the end, you're Perfect. So now we're in this virtual environment, um, and um, so another thing is that they, although they have this requirements.txt file, um, they also mention that the, this is a GPU-based tool, and they don't have anything. There's no Python packages that are related to the GPUs. So um, um, you know it. 
already made a mistake. I'm supposed to, um, we're supposed to be doing this on a, on a compute node with a GPU, since it's a GPU based tool on it. I forgot that. So let's log back in. Um, and, um, we'll have to run this module on this, this command and then the module load, we already created an environment. So just activate it. Okay, so we're back. Um, but what I was going to say is that um, we'll have to actually install PyTorch with CUDA support, which is like, um, CUDA is like the GPU, uh, I guess, library for uh, NVIDIA-based GPUs. Um, and I always forget the, uh, we'll just use one of the versions that I know works. So I'm gonna um, kind of copy and paste here. Do not do it here. <laughs> okay. Um, there's the last time I did this. Um, Pretty sure we do in here. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so we'll manually install this um, version of PyTorch that we know is, um, uses CUDA 11.3, which happens to be basically supported on this GPU node that I'm on. So you do need to know a little bit about the hardware you're, you're on. Um, Okay. Is, it, um, is there documentation somewhere about like? I don't think it is yet for the cluster. I know they're working on that for the GPU nodes because they're relatively new. But um, yeah, we'll upgrade PIP since I don't think it's automatically like up to date with the virtual environment. Um, and then we will, yeah, we'll install this torch. Um, So yeah, sometimes you have to like do a little, like they didn't really document that. I mean, they say you, you need, um, it's PyTorch based, but they don't actually really like explicitly tell you how to install that kind of thing. So um, sometimes it takes a while, but um, basically we'll, we can start writing the next steps, which are, um, um, We'll do a command like, oh, we need to, um, okay, we need to actually download this. Um, I started to do this earlier and then I, uh, I copied the link for it and everything. So after this, once this is like ready, we'll um, actually um, download this repository. It's also a tar GZ file, so we'll unzip it. Um, um, and then, so I forget what it will be called, but inside we'll basically do a, um, this. Um, so this is like the command for using pip to install, um, Packages that are listed in the requirements.txt file. So do something like that. Um, okay, so we're good. Let's get the repository. Um, and then this command should be correct, I think. And okay, so it's called paste 1.3.0. Um, Okay, so it's directly in the repository. Oh, I need it. Um, okay. So it's in this case, that's 1.3.0 file. So yeah, we'll basically get all the other dependencies that they recommend. Um, and while that's running, um, they also say that like it's part of a package, which I don't think has 
um, if they did it correctly, it would have the, I guess, the required dependencies, but I sometimes get paranoid. Um, so I've definitely noticed with other tools, like if you just do like the pip install command, like um, it doesn't actually like, there's a lot of packages that you don't get with it that you might need. So it's like usually worth it to try to get manually, like install more dependencies. Um, so, yeah, there's like this huge debate. I, people say like, oh, should you use like Python dash M pip? Should you use pip? Should you use pip three? But I don't remember what the, yeah, I don't remember what the like recommended one actually is, and if there's actually still consensus, consensus but um, this is what I'm using now. I have some dependencies installed with pip and others with pip three. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so then, okay, we got that, and now I'll solve the package itself. Um, okay, so now if we open Load Python, we should be able to. Um, is it? Let me make sure it is. Okay, so it's just called paste when it's in the package. So we better be able to import paste. That'd be awkward. That's not work. Um, so just ver verifying the installation. Um, okay, so that's the package itself, but like, we want to check the GPU support now. So since we know this is a PyTorch tool, I'm going to import Torch. Um, and then you can do, there's some functions that you can use, like since this is a CUDA based uh, GPU, we're going to do CUDA dot is available to, to just see if CUDA is working basically, um, which would indicate that the like, GPU support should should work as well. Um, so this is a good way to make sure that like your, the GPU portion, which can be pretty important for speed, um, make sure that's working. I don't know why it takes so long sometimes, but sometimes it's like instantaneous and other times it's like, okay, so cool, it's working. Um, and then uh, just another check we could do is like, um, if it knows which GPU to use, which, okay, so it's defaulting to the, the first GPU. So yeah, those are usually the two checks I take to make sure like things are installed correctly at least and GPU support is good. Okay, um, so we've done the actual installation piece of things. So um, next we will do the version control portion. So normally we'll just commit the readme, like the install files are like too large to host on GitHub and usually not useful anyways, that sense. Um, so let's just uh, add some stuff to the git ignore. So really anything that starts with paste can go into the um, into a git ignore, and then we'll also ignore the um, yeah this thing. Um, although we could, in theory, we could just delete that since um, I don't know. That's sort of a preference thing, I guess. Um, we'll pen that to the git ignore. Um, Okay, that's everything we want to ignore. It's a... Oh, did I? Uh, I did that wrong. Let's restart. Um, okay, so now we'll do permissions. Um, so normally we do like 775, so that means like you and anyone in your group can um, read, write, and execute, and then anyone can read basically. Um, so anyone can use this, these modules. So um, this isn't the right path, but we'll change it to, since I just created the paste directory, I'm just gonna um, do it from the top. So, um, so that said, in terms of the actual module file, 775 is good, but what I recommend doing if your building module is, um, Five 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 for the Python virtual environment or your Conda environment. Um, so 
I just do this to protect. So like if someone loads the module and then forgets to unload it and then tries to install their own Python packages, but actually it's using the module version, this is just to protect like accidental changes to the module that would affect everybody. Um, that's just a little like safety thing I do. Um, it's like 3.0 and um, it was called this. Um, so all the other files will have like, you know, more relaxed permissions in the, in the, book, uh, the Python virtual environment. Um, so this is indeed the right path on this. And um, okay, so I, basically I explained that in words, but um, it's, Um, okay, so we did that. Uh, I'll actually hold off on running these commands since we're still editing the readme. Um, well, you know what? We can, we can do the, the ignore. Um, okay, and then just for reproducibility, we run these commands and just paste the output into the readme just so we have like a, you know, sometimes people load their own modules in their bash RC and that, that can affect how things get installed. So that would be like a reason why you want to document this. Um, uh, let's see. All right, let me. Um, oh, it's my turn. Okay, I see what happens. So my terminal was just like. Being a little buggy right now. Um, to the date. Today. Whoops. Okay. Sign date. Um, and I, okay, well, just as a sanity check, but if I'm insane, I'm actually not myself. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then this host name is um, especially important in this case because the GPU node is on a particular compute node. So, like, um, And you know, I don't think, did I? Uh, I'm gonna explicitly document that we're on the GPU node since it's pretty critical to how this was installed. Um, installed on Caracol. Um, and I think that's it for the readme. Um, so now we can add that. Um, the highlighting the parent. Um, okay, there's a lot of things that, oh, wait, let's see what happens. Um, so it looks like I didn't properly ignore. Um, it's, I'm not sure why this happened actually. I mean, um, Oh, okay. So, yeah, I did that. I meant to echo the literal. So, yeah, that's what that's what it was. I didn't put this in quotes. So it was actually evaluating in the shell, and then you need one per, one per line. So that's uh, um, let me. Okay, so we just added the gig. All right, so let's on reset that uh, and modify it again. So. No, yeah, normally you should put these things in quotes. So it's just uh, for this exact reason. Um, and okay, so now we should be, let me just do a good status to make sure we ignored what we wanted to. Cool, okay. Um, and then let's add the get ignore again. 
Um, okay. And normally I'll just say like, um, like added the source related files or whatever the tool was. Um, 1.3.0. Um, might as well just push this right now. Um, okay, so now we need the Lua port. So we installed things. Uh, you know what? I didn't save this readme. So I, that's super annoying. Um, Um, okay, let's, did I do it too early? Um, okay, I did, I was typing too fast. <laughs> okay, it's funny. Um, all right, so this was the, we were in the source repo. And we have a separate location for the Lua files. Let's navigate to, to that. Um, so that would be this one. Um, I'll do it in a new window so we can. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, we'll have to create a, um, just like last time, we'll create a paste directory. Um, and then um, let's see what a good one to copy from would be. Uh, not this. Oh, I actually built this module incorrectly, but that's I'll fix that later. <laughs> um, so yeah, normally I'll copy and paste from my like. Another tool I know to be like GPU based, I think we'll do the this one. And this will be great. I'll explain all the lines. So like um let's go back and um and here we will create so we need to name it by the version. Um it's important. Um so we'll just start with this template. So the help message will, this is pretty trivial. We'll just, um, yeah, change it to this. We used Python 3.8.3. Um, yeah, okay, that's good. Um, we normally, so I don't know if they, I think they might've configured something since that, doesn't allow you to load modules on the login node, but this is just like a warning message if you are in the login node, since you're not supposed to be doing, you know, compute intensive net, uh, stuff on the login node. So we'll keep that. Um, so we'll have a different message for loading and unloading, but uh, same thing, just replace it with. Uh, Okay, and then we did load the Python 3.8.3 module to start things. And then we will, uh, I don't think we have to do anything special with any other variables. Um, we'll just have this command, which again, is just activating the Python virtual environment. That's all it is. Um, and let me find the path for that, which should be this. Um, okay, so I think that's good. It should be everything we need. So I'm going to save that. Um, and then, um, I just need to make sure I'm in the right uh, directory now. Since I didn't like CD to the, um, yeah. So this is um, 
I have this line, by the way, in my batch RC. So this is to use the LIBD module. So that's like, um, that's where I'm installing things. These are in this LIBD associated folder. So you might need to add that if you want LIBD modules as well. And um, terminal, um, we'll just, Theory, I probably shouldn't use have both things open, but um, so let's check the get status. So, oh yeah, you know what? I forgot to change permissions. So let's let's do the CH mod um, again for this, and then we'll. Actually, you know what? Let me check that this works before I like start committing things. Um, so, module load paste, and I, in this case, there's only one paste version, so I don't have to specify the version. It just will know what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, now we do see that like this little thing is showing that we're in the Python virtual environment. If I say what version of Python are we using, it is the one associated with the, the environment, which is good. Just gonna. Again, do the basic tests to make sure. Um, and then this actually should not work because I just log into a normal node. Um, or actually, this is a, it might say, yeah, it's just it's a false since we don't have a GPU, but that's okay. That doesn't mean we did check that we installed it correctly. It's just, we're not on the right node right now. Um, so, and then you can also unload the module and then you should get back to the normal terminal without the environment. So it looks like we did things right. So I'm going to um, add this. So add Lua for paste um, like three point oh. Um, so yeah, that, we just made a LIB, full LIBD module. So that's sort of what the process looks like. Um, um, yeah, let me move to. And then as you start, you add new versions. Uh, yes. Um, basically, yeah, I was gonna get into that. So some, okay. just some like best practices. I did mention the, the file permissions stuff, mm -hmm. like pretty relaxed stuff for most of the files. But for the the virtual environments that you want to keep static, um, this five 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 is pretty good, I think. So read and execute, but not write. Um, I mentioned uh, so everyone. If you have like some people could set environment variables or modules to be loaded in your FastRC. So if you're creating a module, just be like mindful of which things you might have that others don't. That might be affecting how things get installed. Um, and then, yeah, I think Brian, you mentioned what probably what I think I was going to talk about, which was like this versioning. Um, so I did mention the thing about the GitHub, like just for reproducibility, it's better to you know download particular releases rather than the latest Git commit, which could change daily or even more or hourly even. Um, and when a new software version is available, I would say create a new module so that way modules that exist don't change over time. Um, so like if someone loads a particular module, you know exactly what they loaded. And it's not a function of, you know, when they loaded it. Um, so those are just like some recommendations, but um, yeah, uh, that's really all I had for today. So I don't know if there's a question. So hopefully this is helpful. Yes. Yeah, thank you. No, two questions. I need to do it <laughs> in order to yeah, uh, yeah. yeah to test it and see. Question is like if there are there's like some help online or some tutorials we can follow to learn more about like okay, models. Actually, as far as I know, this is not documented. Actually, that's part of the reason I wanted to present on it. So mm -hmm. we have like a recording of someone doing it because I don't think it's actually written down anywhere. <laughs> so it's like um so you can share the, the video in order yeah, to follow okay. the 
we'll probably make this, I don't think there's any reason we can't make this public. So um, we'll probably have this on YouTube. Uh, and at least the channel, yeah, um, for sure. Thanks. Yeah, if you have the are things that you need to know in order to follow, for example, uh, specifics to, to Python. Yeah. For example, if the people are not familiar with Python, it's a bit um, difficult to do. Yeah, uh -huh. there's some background knowledge that's sort of like implied that, yeah, you might not. Uh, yeah. Could you explain that? Good, thanks. This is a lot of things, yeah? Just mm. a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's all I had. So, uh, so see you guys. Uh, happy Friday.